Blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Miriam, and I'll be reading to you tonight from the book of Mary, uh, chapter 8. <clears throat> Therefore, Joseph went from Judea to Galilee with intention to marry the virgin who was betrothed to him. For it was now near three months since she was betrothed to him, and at length it plainly appeared she was with child, and it could not be hid from Joseph. For going to the virgin in a free manner, as one espoused and talking familiarly with her, he perceived her to be with child, and thereupon began to be uneasy and doubtful, not knowing what course it would be best to take. For being a just man, he was not willing to expose her, nor defame her by the suspicion of being a whore, since he was a pious man. He purposed, therefore, privately to put an end to their agreement, and as privately to put her away. But while he was now meditating on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in his sleep, and said, Joseph, son of David, fear not. Be not willing to entertain any suspicion of the virgins being guilty of fornication, or to think anything amiss of her. Neither be afraid to take her to wife, for that which is begotten in her and now distresses your mind is not the work of man, but the Holy Ghost. For she of all women is that only virgin who shall bring forth the Son of God, and you shall call his name Jesus, that is, Savior, Yeshua, salvation, for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph thereupon, according to the command of the angel, married the virgin, and did not know her, but kept her in chastity. And now the ninth month from her conception drew near. When Joseph took his wife and what other things were necessary to Bethlehem, the city from whence he came, and it came to pass, while they were there, the days were fulfilled for her bringing forth, and she brought forth her firstborn son, as the holy evangelists have said, <clears throat> and taught even our Lord Jesus Christ, who with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost lives and reigns to everlasting ages. This is an historical account of the birth of Jesus Christ and the perpetual Virgin Mary, his mother, by James, the lesser, cousin, and brother of the Lord Jesus, chief apostle and first bishop of the Christians in Jerusalem. In the history of the twelve tribes of Israel, we read there was a certain person called Joachim, who, being very rich, made double offerings to the Lord God, having made this resolution, My substance shall be for the benefit of the whole people, and that I may find mercy from the Lord God for the mercy, forgiveness of my sins. But at a certain great feast of the Lord, when the children of Israel offered of their gifts, and Joachim also offered his, Reuben, the high priest, opposed him, saying, It is not lawful for thee to offer thy gifts, seeing thou hast not begot any issue in Israel. And at this Joachim, became, being very concerned much, went away to consult the registries of the twelve tribes to see whether he was only the only person who had not, who had begot no issue. But upon inquiry he found that all the righteous had raised up seed in Israel except for himself and his wife. Then he called to mind the patriarch Abraham, how that in God in the end of his life had given him his son Isaac, upon which he was exceedingly distressed and would not be seen by his wife, but retired into the wilderness and fixed his tent there and fasted forty days and forty nights, saying to himself, I will not go down either to eat or drink until the Lord my God shall look down upon me, but prayer shall be my meat and drink. Chapter 2, verse 1. In the meantime, his wife Anna was distressed and perplexed on a double account, and said, I will mourn both for my widowhood and my barrenness. Then drew near a great feast of the Lord, and Judith, her maid, said, <clears throat> How long will you thus afflict your soul? The feast of the Lord is now come, when it is unlawful for anyone to mourn. Take therefore this hood which was given by one who makes such things, for it is not fit that I, who am a servant, should wear it. But it is well suits a person of your greater character. But Anna replied, Depart from me, I am not used to such things. Besides, the Lord hath greatly humbled me. 
I fear some ill-designing person hath given thee this, and thou art come to pollute me with thy sin. When then Judith her maid answered, What evil shall I wish you, when you will not hearken to me? I cannot wish you a greater curse than you are under, in that God hath shut up your womb, that you should not be a mother in Israel. And at this Anna was exceedingly troubled, and having on her wedding garment, went about three o'clock in the afternoon to walk in her garden. And she saw a laurel tree, and sat under it, and prayed unto the Lord, saying, O God of my fathers, bless me and regard my prayer, as thou didst bless the womb of Sarah, and gavest her a son, Isaac. Chapter 3 and as she was looking towards heaven, she perceived a sparrow's nest in the laurel, and mourning within herself, she said, Woe is me, who begat me, and what womb did bear me, that I should be thus accursed before the children of Israel, that they should reproach and deride me in the temple of my Yahuwah. Woe is me, to what can I be compared? I am not comparable to the very beasts of the earth, for even the beasts of the earth are fruitful before thee, O Yahuwah, woe is me, to what can I be compared? I am not comparable to the brute animals, for even the brute animals are fruitful before thee. O oh, Lord, woe is me, to what am I comparable? I cannot be compared to these waters, for even the waters are fruitful before thee. O oh, Lord, woe is me, to what can I be compared? I am not comparable to the waves of the sea, for these, whether they are calm or in motion, with the fishes which are in them, praise thee, O Lord. Woe is me, to what can I com be compared? I am not comparable to the very earth, for the earth produces its fruits and praises thee, O Lord. Chapter 4 Then an angel of the Lord stood by her and said, Anna, Anna, Anna. The Lord hath heard thy prayer. Thou shalt conceive and bring forth, and thy progeny shall be spoken of in all the world. And Anna answered, As the Lord my God liveth, whatever I bring forth, whether it be male or female, I will devote it to the Lord my God, and it shall minister to him in holy things during its whole life. And behold, there appeared two more angels, saying unto her, Behold, Joachim, thy husband, is coming with his shepherds. For an angel of the Lord hath also come down to him and said, The Lord that God hath heard thy prayer, make haste and go hence, for behold, Anna thy wife shall conceive. And Joachim went down and called his shepherds, saying, Bring me hither ten she-lambs without spot or blemish, and they shall be for the Lord my God. And bring me twelve calves without blemish, and the twelve calves shall be for the priests and the elders. And bring me also a hundred goats, and a hundred goats shall be for the whole people. And Joaquin went down with the shepherds, and Anna stood by the gate, <laughs> by the golden gate, and saw Joaquin coming with the shepherds. And she ran, <laughs> hanging about his neck, said, Now I know that the Lord hath greatly blessed me, for behold, I, who was a widow, am no longer a widow, and I, who was barren, shall conceive. Please leave your prayer request below so that we can lift you up. Thank you for joining me. Yahuwah bless you. Amen.